Hey everyone, welcome back to the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Witcher 3. So the previous time I ran you through the tutorial and today I'm just going to show you a couple of other things that you need to be aware of before we actually start killing things <laughs> so that you know what to do at least. Um, Witcher does give you in the tutorial, it gives you gameplay help um, with those things that pop up on the left hand side usually. but it doesn't really explain this much especially if you start with this game previous games it does explain it so what we're going to do is uh here you can see this is one of my previous saves that i had i just love the isle of mist so i figured we'll choose this one so the first thing we go i'm going to show you is i'm going to show you your main screen your gameplay screen and then from there on i'll show you a couple of other things as well that you need to be aware of and explain to you what it means uh, so let's start the left top side of the screen. You'll see a creature that kind of looks like a wolf with red eyes. That is your Witcher medallion. Every Witcher, when they, or should I say, if they <laughs> go through the Witcher process and they survive it, very dangerous process, uh, they get a Witcher medallion. Now this medallion you can set to either alert you when there's a power field close by or to... Um, your creatures your monsters so it'll vibrate it'll shake <laughs> if either or is close by now next to that uh, the top bar you see with a little bit of white there that's your experience bar as you can see I recently leveled up in this save so I've still got a while to go to level up the next bar is the red bar that's your health the lower it goes yeah, well, it's self-explanatory. You die. <laughs> right below that, with the little skull, that's your toxicity bar. Now, every single time you use a potion, it adds a little bit of toxicity to it. Some potions add a lot, so they are not very good to use with something else. Usually, those potions that add a lot have quite a bit of awesome stuff that they do, so they are worth it to use, but in moderation. Okay, uh, below the Witcher Medallion, you'll see the yellow bar. That is your Adrenaline bar. You use that one for your signs or for or when you're doing attacks. Uh, if you click and hold or click quite a few times your certain attack, it, it unlocks like a flash attack, basically. Now that unfortunately de depletes your adrenaline bar, but it goes back really quickly. So just keep an eye on that, especially when you're using it for your uh, signs. Okay, then because I'm in a boat, you can drive the boat. So the boat is there as well. Uh, very self, really easy to drive a boat. It is your W and your S, your A and your D. That's it. You hold your left shift like you run to control it on where to go. I'll show you here quickly. But be aware, yeah, be aware you can damage your boat and sink it. I have done that quite a few times, and then I had quite a bit of a swim back. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, then a little bit right and above the boat, you see the circle with the sign. That is an act of power all over the maps. You will find these places of power. They're sh kind of like a shrine. And you can activate the power and for a little bit of time that power will be enhanced by however amount of percentage the shrine or whatever gives you. Okay, so that's just that little bit. This is the ones that you use more constantly, so it's good to know what they mean. Okay, then going to the bottom left of the screen, you see I have R, F, T and Y. Those are shortcut keys. I'll show you when I do the main menu how to activate that and how to use that but this is in a fight you press R if you need to heal up and you eat dry dried fish I ran out of potions so that's probably why I did dried fish here or I figured I wanted to keep my toxicity level low for some reason I can't really remember but yeah you can either eat Mm, sorry about that. <laughs> you can either eat dried fish or use your potions. Um, F is the same thing. It is a shortcut key to use my uh, Petri's filter. 
T is the same thing and Y is the same thing. As you go on, you start, I think, with just R and F. And as you go on, you un unlock more. If I remember correctly, I'd have to double check up on that. Don't take my word for it. Um, and then right at the bottom, you see Precision Bolt. Now, quite early on in the game, you can unlock your um, arrow. Uh, n not arrow, sorry. Um, ah, can't remember the word now. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> Thank you. Your crossbow. There it is. You unlock your crossbow. Now, crossbows like guns need ammo. Now, that precision bolt is just I have 56 precision bolts left. Okay, remember this is tab to get to the short menu and where your signs and such are. Oh, and if you look at that, I have my art sign active for another 4 minutes and 10 seconds. Okay, so that's that part. Really helpful to have that. Press your shortcut key and you can see, okay, I'm running out of dried fish or I'm running out of full moons or whatever so that you know you need to go either make more or meditate depending on your level that you're playing the game as okay top right hand side you have first off the little circle with the sun in it and the time it's basically self-explanatory it tells you what time of the day it is that is very useful uh, some of the some of the quests that you get you have to to be somewhere at a certain time so that's very useful to know what time it is also noon wraiths and night wraiths they only come out at midnight or at noon so yeah now you can see when it is uh, to the right hand side of that there's a big circle with a map that is just your map it shows you where you are or where you're going and if you can look at this one let me see if I can there you go you see the circle there at the bottom left of the map with uh, the little yellowish arrows pointing towards it? It's kind of glowing. That is where I need to go for this quest. On the left hand side of the, the big map there is a little bar with a yellow dot and it says 30 in this case and footsteps next to it. That is just a quick guide to tell you I am 30 paces away from where I need to be. Right below the map is the Isle of Mist. That is the area where I am. And below that is my quest that is active. And that is follow the firefly. Now I need to follow the firefly. There it is right behind me towards something. But I'm not going to do that now. That is the start of a very long quest. I'm actually just showing you what to or what what is going on on this couple of pages next okay then right at the bottom of the page from the right hand side jump space which your sensors hold your right this is just a a short help guide it'll pop up every now and again with whatever you're doing like for instance if I put Gerard back at the helm it'll give me how to move with my boat Okay, so this is your main screen. This is the one that you'll be looking at permanently. Uh, or not permanently, but you will be gaming on this one. The other ones that are very useful to have and to understand are your, your sub-game pages. Uh, so just to open it up, I'm just going to press I. That's usually for inventory. And this is your inventory page. Um, let me take you... To this this is your main kind of menu where you need to go your glossary is it's like a a help guide to your beasts your tutorials your characters your books your crafting it's it's kind of like a what should I call it um, a go-to guide here is all the beasts if you go into beastry here is all the beasts that I've unlocked at this point in time. They are categorized into different categories with the types of beasts and monsters. All are in here. You start off with nothing. <laughs> and then as you read books, very, very important tip that I want to give you. Read 
box. If it mentions any type of beast in it, in the title, read the book so that you can unlock more details about it. Um, and also, when you attack and actually kill a beast, <laughs> it'll be added onto your, your beast tree. And you can, in future reference, if you forgot how you did it the previous time, you should be able to go back to that and you should be able to do it. Now, how this works is, there's my beasts and cursed ones. Let's just go into Elementor. This is just different elemental monsters that I have either faced or read about and I still have to face. So just a quick show you how it works. If I click on the Jin, this pops up. It tells you on the right hand side a little bit of a... It's just a little bit of a history of where they come or how they started or... Or how the specific, if it's a specific um, monster that you have to face, where it came from, and its history, basically. And then it gives you the picture of it in the middle, and below that, it gives you what it's vulnerable against. Now, this is the most important part about the beast here, in my opinion. I know that I need to have this bomb, and that I have to have an elemental well active on my sword. And it'll, it's a little bit of a boost to whatever I already have. These things will definitely help me defeat it. Uh, you can go on from that. One thing that you'll, you'll find a lot of are your necrophages. Your algals. Uh, remember the, the beasts that we faced last time? Right at the end of the tutorial? They are the ghouls. Now, if I had necrophage oil active on my sword... They would have died a lot quicker. Yeah. Darn it. <laughs> but now we know that. For future reference sake. And basically. Yeah. As you go through it. You can see that there are. Many creatures and things that you will face. Spectres. There are, there are even a couple of vampires. Um... Ogroids, they're in my opinion the most disgusting ones. These neckers are really quick, but actually quite fight, fun to fight against. Um, insectoids, yep. Uh, hybrids, oh, the hybrids. There's a griffin. They're quite scary. And harpies, and sirens, and there's even a succubi. Then the Draconids, you have Basilisks and all of those. And then there are Cursed Ones. Uh, these are all, yeah, well, the name kind of describes it all. They're created via a curse of some sort. And your beasts. Now, remember last time I told you that you will face beasts and monsters? Now, these are the more common beasts that, that you will face. Dogs, wolves, and bears. And again, see it gives you what is a good thing. Quen sign and beast oil. Okay. That's your basic beast tree. You can go in your glossary and you can read up on your tutorial. You can read up on characters that you've met. Uh, you can read up on... If you've read a book, I say this with, with air quotes. Um, you can always go back at a later stage and you can reread it again. These are the books that I've read, or some of them. I'm not going to scroll down because it's going to take forever. <laughs> but you can read again, and it'll tell you a little bit more about it. Okay, and then your crafting. I'll show you that m in more depth in a little bit, but this is also here. Okay, then your next part is your alchemy. This is very, very important and very useful. Um... And unless you have played the previous games, you will not know how to do it. So, I'm going to explain this quickly to you. On the left hand side, you've got your substances uh, that you can create. If you have the stuff to create it, it'll be white. And <laughs> I don't have any, so I can't create anything at this point in time. But just to show you, if I wanted to create, say for instance, Albedo. 
click on it and in the middle bar it'll show you what you need so the reason why I can't create it is because I don't have white gold now you should be able I can make white gold or I can buy it at certain alchemists or at certain inns as well if I need to make it hmm I need all of that okay let's see let's try something else I want to see something here um, oh yeah the reason why I cannot do that now is because I'm in the boat okay never mind I was wondering why it doesn't want to do that but anyhow I'm um, coming back to the alchemy I can make the white gull if I have all of the ingredients just press E or click on craft item and I'll create white gull where I then can go back if I have all the other ingredients I could make albedo again or I could try and make it this time and on the right hand side it gives you a short description of what it is now these is used in alchemy so I'm going to use this for another potion but as you go on you will find oh um also mages and some of your guys that you can buy your traders that you buy stuff from have deconcoction um, recipes or any of the other recipes I suggest that you always try and buy them if you can afford it at that point in time if not come back later and get it because you will need it like here are deconcoctions that I have not created yet I kind of made it my quest to get as many of these deconcoctions as possible done I'll show you that when we get to that part to the inventory but to get the arc, arc griffin deconcoction oh I'm sorry that is quite loud to get that deconcoction there's one ingredient that I'm missing and yes I need his mutagen so that means that I have to go fight an arc griffin and win and he'll drop the mutagen and then I can make this potion it's basically how the deconcoctions work you have to go fight that particular creature to get that mutagen and then you can make it the toxins aren't they necessarily against that creature I'll show that to you in a second as well in the inventory screen um, but these deconcoctions are like the powerful the powerful of the powerful basically okay that is your alchemy practice with it play around with it you most of the stuff that you will get are easy to come by the, the more expensive things are the white gull ingredients like your mandrake cordial you can't always get everywhere and it does become expensive and your cherry cordial as well but this flower is very abundant so if you can afford it play around with it create a couple of white gulls and then go and create some of the other stuff okay that's your alchemy next inventory okay this can be quite confusing but let's start from the top left you see the 129 um, slash 160 that basically means that I can carry 160 things I have 129 so fairly soon I will be overburdened and I won't be able to carry any more I have to get rid of that right next to that I have 23,887 golden crowns that's my money okay then we've got the inventory in the middle and on the right I'm a level 26 and just below that and below that bar it says 275 slash 2000 that's my um, experience I've gained 275 of 2000 so still a while to go to level up okay so if we go back to the left hand side we'll have this menu here now if you look at the top it says different things this is my crafting and alchemy this is um, basic ingredients and things that I've picked up or bought along the line now remember in the previous one I told you always pick up the stuff from the creatures you can use it in either your alchemy or in your crafting or 
you can sell it. So try and pick it up, keep it or sell it or use it or whatever, but try and always keep up, uh, pick up, sorry, <laughs> what your creature or your beast or people as well drop. Some of the stuff that people drop is just absolutely useless. That is your choice, but the creatures I say are very important. So basically on this side, it lifts it, lists it, <laughs> sorry, all of the stuff I can use for crafting. And on this side, all of the stuff I can use for alchemy for my potions. Now, as you can see, I've, I've collected quite a few and I've got quite a few mutagens here as well. And I've got plants and I've got alcohol. Alcohol is a, a binding agent for most of your potions. So good thing to have that on hand. Hey, there's even a couple of cockatrice. Cockatrice. I uh, hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Egg. Okay. It's basically what you can do when you come to a merchant um, is you can sell these. If you look at... I'm hovering over one so I just can show you there. It says it's used in alchemy and it's a common item. So it's fairly easy to find these. Um, just below that it shows zero with the little... The same sign as the top left. Uh, which is the weight and then next to that it shows one with two in brackets now if you sell it uh, most of the places you'll get one but a couple of the alchemists or mages and such or herbalists they might give you two um, but in this case what that two in the bracket means is I have two of this fiend dung so I'll get two, most often. Uh, let me just quickly see if I can find... This is a magic item, so it's a little bit more expensive. As you can see, 27. And I've got two, so it's 54. Um, that's also very common. Um, I'm thinking... I'm uh, probably not. Just because I'm looking, I'm probably not going to find one of the more rarer items. But anyhow, they're more expensive. That's basically it. You can sort this slot out as well by clicking on that and going to click quick sort. <laughs> or you can sort items manually. To manually decide how you want to sort it. By their type, their price, their weight, durability and rarity. Let's go do that so I can show you. So it sorted it out. That is considered then a very rare thing. It's the siren vocal cords. Oh, okay. Mutagens, and it goes on from there. It is the most rare to the least rare. Same on this side. Okay, that's your crafting explained. Crafting and alchemy explained. Next up, you have your quest items and other items. Now, these quest items are whatever you need that care that are given to you or that you have to pick up or collect or find or whatever to continue on with the quest sometimes it's a key as you can see sometimes it is a note sometimes it's just weird things and the other side this is other this is basically oh, this is different levels you could pick up this stuff to sell it or you can pick up this stuff to in your crafting to pull them apart and use it. Um, sometimes I collect a ton of... Uh, I should actually have some. Okay, there's a, a bear hide. Sometimes I have a ton of those. Sometimes I have a ton of wolf hides. So then I usually just go and sell about half of it. And then use the other half for my crafting. Because your crafting is... Basically for your character, it's where you can create armor, um, boots, swords, yeah, all of those. Okay, next up, you've got your food and drink on the left hand side. If you do not want to use a health potion, this is a very good thing to have. Uh... Okay, alcohol. <laughs> if you use too much of it, it makes your screen go blurry and your character uh, loses a bit of focus on that as well. So be careful how you use your alcohol. But your food, most often than not, it gives you... See, like that. 
AT Vitality re Regeneration and AT Vitality, vitality whew, Regeneration during combat. <laughs> and it's 10 second effect duration. Uh, you can also again sell this stuff if you want, if you don't want a specific kind or if you think you have too much of it you or you're low on funds, you can sell this as well. Uh, you pick these up in crates all over the game. Um, you can buy them from inns, uh, you can collect them. Sometimes um, if you fight, especially the bandits, I've, I've found that the bandits do that quite often. If you fight the bandits, they will drop a pouch that has like a sandwich or a steak or something or something in it. Okay. On this side, this is Roach. Now, remember, last time I introduced you to your your horse is called Roach. This is trophies at the top that I haven't stashed yet. I don't like selling my trophies. You can sell them, but I don't know. Like, I kind of want to just keep them on the <laughs> the wall or something. Um, each trophy, if you activate it, gives you a little bit of a a boost somehow. Now Roach carries the trophies. I will, um, I will probably be able to call. No, I won't be able to call Roach. Oh well, we'll see. Um, but I'll show you if I am able to call him. I'll show you where the where the trophy goes. And then you have your saddlebags. This is basically just a help for Roach. Some of them give you extra stamina, like this one gives you 45 stamina. That one 55, that one 60, that one 65. This one allows you to carry more stuff in your inventory. Now you can give Roach stuff as well to carry if you if you have a problem or you're running low. Um, but then again, remember if you you try and run with him, then his stamina will deplete very quickly. Okay, this is just Roach then. Okay, next up you have your potions, your oils, your potions, and your bombs. Now, as I said earlier, you will create most of these. Sometimes it will be given to you. There is a quest that you get a specific bomb that they give you. Um, and then afterwards you get the recipe on how to create it yourself. So, yeah, you still get to do it yourself. Um, now, these are very helpful in your actual gameplay. Oils. <coughs> mm, sorry oils go either on your steel sword which is for your humans and your beasts or it goes on your silver sword which is for your monsters now if you look at that little droplet there it means that I have an oil on my sword active at the moment and if you look at the little drop down menu of, of the information on my sword it says necrophage oil so I have necrophage oil active on that. If I attack a necrophage, that will slow them down and it'll help me a little bit. Um, of course, every single oil is used for something else, so keep that in mind as well. Just a quick show you what there is. Well, what I have is the insect oil. Oh, you get your different levels of insect oil as well. You can upgrade them basically. You start off with your basic and then you go on from there. Superior and enhanced. It just basically makes it more potent as you upgrade it. In the middle, you have your potions and your deconcoctions. Now, I would have actually liked for them to have my deconcoctions separate from my potion. Because if I'm in a battle and I'm quickly looking, I don't know, for, say, Superior Tawny Owl. Yeah, you see, I just need to scroll to get to it. You can sort the items, but it doesn't really matter that much. See? Now, these awesome looking potion bottles here are some of the deconcoctions that I told you about earlier that I've collected that I've made look at that one it has 70 of 130 toxicity so it is actually very toxic to you I would not suge suggest um, using this one when you are planning on going to use a lot of say for instance um, your filters or your Oh, there's another deconcoction there, or whatever, or health potions, whatever. 
as your toxicity will go up very quickly it will slow you down and if it's too high it will kill you <coughs> okay but anyhow that's your choice it's your game so play around have fun with it die multiple times that's the whole idea and just enjoy it learn it the way do it the way you want it uh, but anyhow next you've got your bombs Sorry about that, still not rid of the cold. Um, but anyhow, next you've got your bombs. These are, remember in the tutorial, I chucked a bomb at the guy. These are the same thing. I can, they do various things and they again help against various things as well. If you looked at the beast theory earlier, um, they mentioned the, uh, which one was it? I think it was this bomb. Um, it says it releases a cloud of demeritium. Slivers that block magic and monsters magic abilities. So if you're fighting a monster that has magic abilities, this would be the perfect one to have. Okay, that is then basically that part of your inventory. And lastly, you have your weapons and your armor. I don't have any armor that I can show you now, but... I think I should be able to do it from the other side. Okay, but anyhow, these are in your arm, uh, in your, in your back, back, back. <laughs> I have this weapon. It's probably one, if I remember correctly, that I substituted fairly recently, and I haven't been able to get to a mage or uh, not a mage, um, a trader to sell it. But if you look at it, it gives you the title of the of the blade of the sword. Right below it, it tells you it's a steel sword. So, okay, I know it's there on the left-hand side. Below that, it gives you the level of damage that it gives you. And if you look in just next to that, it shows minus 12 in red. Which basically means that this sword is smaller or it will give less damage than the one that I currently have active. If it's green and it has a plus, it's better. Right below that, it gives me the 50% critical hit damage, um, and it, the required level is level 23. This is a relic item, so they're not as easy to find. The, again, the weight is 2.21. Um, next to that, you see that 100% with a little hammer? That's very important, because as you use your swords and your armor, it, well... It'll need a little bit of help, and you'll have to take care of it. You'll have to repair it at some point. So, that just tells me that it is 100% repaired, so it's in a very good condition. And lastly on that list, it's 337 crowns worth. Okay. These are my bolts. Remember for the crossbow, this one shows, see the plus 2 in green? That it's plus two damage better than what I currently have. Now I'm thinking what I had there was just basically I faced a bunch of enemies considering that I have so many of them. Or something big happened. I can't really remember because this was just one of my old saves that I went to. But go through it and always try and keep up with the best that you can. Uh, you might like one weapon a little bit more than the other. But at a later point, it won't help you very much. You will need something stronger. Okay, and then... Next up, we see these things. They are runestones. You can later on make your own runestones, or you can pick them up, buy them, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill that I've told you about already. Now, some of your weapons, I'm just going to activate this one, because as you can see, that one does not have that little circle. That circle means that you can activate a runestone on it. So to activate it, double click on it. Now I can go through here and I can show you. This has a 2% chance to poison. This has one to cause 2% chance to cause burning. Armor piercing. Attack power. Stun. Attack power. And adrenaline point game. So again, your game, you decide what you want. I think I'm going to go with chance to cause burning. So I'm just going to drag it and I'm going to drop it. That means it's active. It's a one-use thing. Um, 
you can in crafting ask certain of the, the craftsmen they are able to take it apart and you can get that runestone back but you can't go oh damn it no I don't want to and use another one it won't come back see and one use so be careful <laughs> okay and then below that these are repair kits I suggest that you always try to have at least one or two of these in your backpack for your weapons and your armor because in the middle of a battle your armor might just give in and you will lose a lot of help from that side so you can quickly repair it and then continue on from there okay on the armor side these are also rune stones sorry these are glyphs <laughs> But the same principle as the runestone, but these work only on your armor. Now, I don't have armor that doesn't have active already, so I can't show you. But I can show you on this one, that if you look at the circle with a plus 2% Quen sign intensity. So, I added that to my trousers. My chest armor has plus 2% Quen sign intensity and plus 2% Igni sign intensity. So I try to, I guess, balance it out there. Okay, whew, that was a lot. But this is just the first part of your inventory screen. From you on, it'll be quick. I promise, I hope. <laughs> okay, I have explained the swords a little bit for you, but this is where, the top part is where you will see your weapons. Your steel sword, your silver sword. I have my ranged weapon which in this case is a crossbow and my bolts for the crossbow. Always make sure that they, you have bolts active or it will go back to the standard bolts, which are weak, but they do the job, I guess. Next part is your consumables. Now, remember when I showed you on the main screen the RTF and Y? This is what you will use for them. I have my fish here and I have other potions here that I wanted to use so I put them in there in a battle it's just quickly press a key on the keyboard and you have them you don't have to go in into your inventory to use them and then below I have my bombs this is the pockets and the bombs so I have two bombs that I have active even though remember in my inventory I have a couple of bombs you can only have two active at a time so you might have to switch around fairly often and then my pockets I have a torch and I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that word but it's something that I needed for a quest that's it okay then you have your character if you press and hold your left mouse no, nope, never mind, he doesn't want to do that now. But anyhow, um, the right hand side is everything that is to do with him and your horse. So on the top, it is your armor that you're wearing, your chest armor. I'm wearing enhanced feline armor. Um, it's 150 armor, attack power, resistance to piercing, blah, 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 blah. Now... In green on the top it says enhanced feline armor. This means that it's basically part of a set. Most of the sets have a little bit of an extra bonus if you wear the entire set. You get that. Some of them don't, but in my opinion I've not always stuck to that. I kind of just go for what is best. But again, your game, so do what you want. Gloves, trousers, boots, all of those. Then it's roach, your horse. He is currently carrying the Arakas Trophy and it says gives me a 5% chance to find additional herbs. Saddlebags plus 100 maximum inventory weight. He is got the saddle that's 80 stamina. This is for him, not for you though. And he's wearing horse blinders so that it reduces his horse's fear level. Um, if you run into a fight while on your horse, he won't as easily buck you off and run the other direction. <laughs> he might actually try and fight with you. Depends on how scary the, the monster is, I guess. 
And then at the bottom, you have two that is your vitality and your toxicity. Vitality is your health. That is the amount of health I have and toxicity is zero. So I haven't had any bad potions yet. Let's, I want to show you quickly. Let's take one of these. Let's go for that one. I'm just going to activate it there. Let's go out. It is R. If I use R. Did you see how the... the okay, let's go in back in here. Do you see how much my toxicity climbed? Now, if I use a couple of more potions that are high in toxicity level, I will die. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Your toxicity does go down. Or you can use... Um, where is it? Oh, that's not it. Nope. See, that's the other thing that I don't like about it, but that's not my... I didn't design the game, so you shouldn't play it. <laughs> uh, this is just a superior white honey. This clears the toxicity, but it cancels all active potion effects as well. So don't just jump and drink it unless you are done with your potion effect. Okay. So that's it. That is your inventory screen. There are a couple more screens that I want to show you and then I'm going to stop this video here and the next one will continue on with our absolute beginner's guide to Witcher. So, quickly, this is the world map. You have different areas in the world map that you can go to. Uh, let me scroll out a little bit. This is the Isle of Mist. It shows me where I am now. And where I am supposed, as you can see, there is where I'm supposed to go for my quest. Um, I don't, I can't go out here, can I? Oh, okay, there you go. Space, of course, for the world, world map. This is different areas of the world map that you can go to and that you will have to do different quests as well. Um, let me just go in Novigrad. This is Novigrad. Quite a large map. As you can see, this is all the things that I have done. Different keys to the map as well. It gives you all of that on the left hand side. Um, one thing that I want to show you quickly. You see these question marks. These are undiscovered locations. Um, I have, I tried to at one point to get all the undiscovered locations but sometimes it is a bit much and I wanted to I was curious I wanted to continue on the storyline uh, maybe I'll go back and discover them see that that's a monster nest hmm? that one is a monster nest you'll get quite a few of those as well but this is what I wanted to show you uh, remember the beginning I told you about the place of power now this is the place of power you can at any given point in time go back to that place of power and activate that power again um yeah so it's good to know where they are keep an eye on where you are and so forth i suggest going through these keys and familiarizing yourself with what they mean i am not going to go through all of them because i will confuse you but keep an eye on it okay that's the world map the quests this is your quest list you have four tabs here your main quest will be on the top this is for the main storyline and it shows you what you need to do and that is also the one that i have active currently my secondary quest list um, is not for the main storyline but it is fairly close to getting me in the direction of the main storyline if i can put it like that Witcher contracts is contracts that you go from village to village and they tell you that this monster or this thing, beast or whatever has been bothering them and then you have to go and kill it. Um, just to show you quickly, that is a sign of where it is. Remember in the, the maps, each area had its own shield with its uh, flag. Now that just shows you where it is. That shows you the suggested level that you need to be to go get it. And... It tells you Lord of the Wood. Oh, and it tells you again as well. It's a Novigrad. If you click on it, it tells you on the right hand side what you need to do. And to if you've done there, 
just click on it to make it active but if you've done say three or four this has three or four parts of it it will have a tick to what you've done part of the contract and then you have your hmm, sorry wow that was loud as well then you have your treasure hunts you will get these these are usually for either gear um, or for a weapon it's it's basically it's a it's a scavenger is it is a treasure hunt <laughs> they're all over the place and they get quite hard to do and you've got your completed these are just some of the ones that I've done and the failed ones yes I have failed a couple of them some of them are linked to a certain time period some of them are linked to a certain I had to do something a certain way and then I could either unlock this or that so some of them I was bad at some of them was just because that's how I played the game okay so that's your quest your character oh this is a very this is your character so it's your choice what you want to do with this. Some people might not agree with me with what I will say here. But again, as I said, it is your choice, your character. This is your character screen. This is where you can control what you want your character to be. Uh, if you want to be better at combat and crap at alchemy, then add all your points in combat. It's your character. It's your game. Uh, but let me just quickly go through this with you on the left hand side you will see your little tabs that's your combat tab that is your science tab that is your alchemy tab your general tab and that's your mutagen tab I'll explain them all to you very fairly quickly and right now I have at the bottom I have one point available that I can spend across the, those four tabs now as you can see I kind of try to balance my character a little bit some things I uh, was just not as useful to me as the other things but maybe in the next game I will decide that I I want to spend all of them in signs who knows but anyhow you use it row by row by row if you look at that one it says the, uh, it needs to un oh, sorry to unlock this branch I need to unlock three in any of the above so uh, you need to finish that branch first before you can go to the first one you can add all of your say for instance that one said I needed three um, and I had nothing here I could use all three on that one it's just you need a certain amount of points to unlock it for the next level and same thing with your signs they do that as well your signs has your five signs that you use and then they have as you go on they intensify that sign basically or add extra awesomeness to the sign uh, your potions is your potion creation and your toxicity level will be here as well see there's acquired tolerance so it makes my toxicity a little bit more well better <laughs> and then here you have your general this is <coughs> sorry like as you can see in that one vitality generally generates during the day a little bit quicker this is just general gameplay it is not linked to any of those it might in a roundabout way be linked to all of them but it's just for the the balance of the game okay so if I want to spend my one point I just choose one that is available to me and click on it and then as you can see E acquire ability are you sure yes and I've got it okay now what you can do with those abilities is these branches here as you level up they unlock first off you'll get you'll start with this one and then you'll continue on from that now if you want the extra bonus try and keep one branch one color and keep the mutagen the same color as that branch you can mix them up but then you won't get the the 
bonus that is given to you for having all of them the same basically um, see for instance my attack power is plus 40 percent if I take that and I rather put that mutagen my vitality changes now to plus 150 you see what I did there if I put it back attack power is plus 40 you can do it whichever way you want. Again, it's your character. Uh, but this is just a tip for me. Uh, what I wanted to show you about this is these are the ones that are active. You can at any given point in time, you can change those to anything else. If you decide that you are going to fight a strong foe, you can go activate the strong one for that period of time. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, keep up with it. Try and try and play around and find your best grouping of what works for you and continue on from there. Now, I haven't unlocked these last two yet, so I'm quite excited to see what will happen with those if I remember. I don't know. I have to go check for my old save. <laughs> but these... Remember I told you earlier about the mutagens? That's your mutagens. If you fight your big foes, they will drop something like this. The greater green mutagen. Or you can create those as well. Um, but yes, each one of them adds a little bit of something extra. This one adds 150 vitality. That one adds 10% sign intensity. And, okay, and that one I already showed you. But adds plus ten percent attack power. So play around, figure out what you want to do. Make all of them red if you want to be a combat person. Make all of them green if you want to go to um, your alchemy, blue for your signs. Whatever, your game. Okay, that is your character. And then lastly, you have your meditation. Now, meditation is very useful if you can actually do it meaning that there aren't any foes nearby um, and what's great about this witcher the first witcher you had to do it at a fire um, so that was kind of annoying you either had to build a fire or kind of hog someone else's but this here you don't have to you can meditate anywhere which comes in very handy especially if you're very low on health and you just kind of want to Get that back up. Run away from a phone until you're safe. And then meditate for an hour. Um, depending on which gameplay you also use. Uh, your potions will regenerate. Kind of. While you are meditating. So this is, this is your meditation. Uh, it shows you your time that you can. I can unfortunately not meditate but while I am in this area of the map. So I will not be able to show you. But you can. This is a 24 hour day by the way. Sunrise, suns no, sunrise <laughs> noon, sunset and midnight. If you want to meditate for an hour, you just click on that next bar and you click meditate. If you want to meditate until the next day, that time, you click on that. See? And you'll meditate. That's it. That's your meditation. Uh, your guy will sit down in a very comfortable position. And he'll quickly meditate. Time will fire by. And you'll be able to do or whatever you, reason you wanted to meditate. You'll be able to do that. Okay. So that is your main menu. And your main screen. I hope you understand. If there is anything that I explain that you want me to explain again. Or that you want me to just show you a little bit better leave me a comment and i will work on that okay but then thank you for watching like and subscribe if you want to see more and yeah enjoy ciao